everyone. So today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite homeschool resources that we use in our homeschool, and that is comb binding and laminating. So stay tuned and I'll show you all about how we use these in our homeschool. When I decided to start homeschooling, I was really nervous about how I was going to pay for it. And one of the things I found was that there was a lot of free resources out there, but you had to kind of compile them yourself. Um, so one of the things I found was laminating and comb binding. That way I could make my own projects and put my own workbooks together. So these are some of the things that I have laminated. Um, the laminator I got, I purchased through laminator.com and I actually have it plugged in and it's heating up now so I can show you how it works. It's very compact, it's very lightweight, and I bought it for $24.99 from laminator.com. No, this is not sponsored, this is just what I bought and where I bought it. Um, it takes the pouch types of laminator sheets. So I got the 9 by 11 and a half pouches, which holds a regular sheet of paper, and it comes as two pieces, and it's joined here, and you slide your piece of paper in, and grab a sample. So what you would do is you would take a piece of paper, and you would line it up, up at the top into that crease, and then you lay it flat, and then now that it is ready, you're going to put it crease side first in through the laminator. And you're going to want to run it through at least twice. Sometimes I run it through three times depending on how it looks. So I have it set all the way at the highest setting which is 125. And it just slowly pulls itself through. It's got little rollers in there. I'm not sure if you can hear them or not. But it also has a release switch. If you find that something happens to get stuck in there, you can release it and it rolls it back towards you. Okay, so there you go. That's one sheet. And actually that did really well. The only problem I have is up here, you can still see it's a little bit cloudy. I don't know if you can see that. It's not completely clear. So I'm just gonna run it through again. I'm gonna run it back through where it was originally closed up. And it just grabs it and pulls it through. I find the second pass really helps it be more brittle, more firm. The first pass is still a little bit pliable. Um, let's see if I can, it's still a little pliable and I like it to be more firm. Okay, and already down here, it's already cool. It's warm still up here. Um, but down here it's already cool. So it really takes no time to cool down. Okay, so there you go. Sheet of paper, laminated in no time. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off now. Now I purchased that along with some um, pockets. They call them pockets that you laminate in. I got three by five and nine by 11 and a half. And they come in boxes that look like this. It opens on this side and they are in a plastic wrapper. It helps keep uh, any kind of debris out and they're held together by static electricity. So it, it helps maintain that. But when they come out, again, it just looks like this. You slide your paper in, it grabs hold and it goes through the laminator and it heats it and seals it shut. Now, I will caution you, I got the three by five not thinking about it because um, I thought it'd be great, I can put index cards in there. I'm not even gonna mess with that. I got the three by five thinking, great, I can put index cards in there and have them be flashcards. Well, flashcards are three and a half by five. These are only three by five. Plus you have to think about the fact that it is bound up at the top, so that loses that 
a bit of space there. So if you are trying to put a three by five card in there, three and a half by five card, you get overhang. So it doesn't quite work. Um, but what I've found is I will print, I will either cut these in half or I will print on a computer page my girls' um, flashcards for their sight words or uh, flashcards for multiplication tables or anything like that and then I will just laminate them that way and that way it can go from Natalie to Katie and we can use them for multiple years without them being destroyed. So I really do like the laminator. It is a splurge purchase. It is not at all necessary for making your own workbooks. It's just something that I like. I do the cover of my workbook and the back page of my workbook. It gives it a little more uh, sturdiness so it's a little more stable. Another thing I do with our laminator is I I do things like this. I found these online. Um, and sorry, I got a fuzz. I found these online, and you can find so many free resources online. If you just type in multiplication worksheets, you will get tons of free worksheets. And that is how I made all of our workbooks the first year that we homeschooled because I I came into the game late. We decided in July and all the used curriculum sales were over and I, I didn't know how we were going to afford it because now we are a one income family and we don't make a lot of money. We're on a tight budget. So this was a great resource for us. We found a lot of free things online and this will eventually be part of a multiplication um, lap book. So I have different things for um, each number. So this is crowns and what goes on top the product is uh, glass slippers. So the product of five times six there is a glass slipper with a 30 on it and it'll have a piece of velcro on here and they can put the 30 on the five times six and that's a game. That's a game that they can play. So I've got them in all of the different multiplications of five and I have them for both girls, so I've got some duplicates here, obviously, but those will go in, in lap books, and they'll be in a pocket, so these will be the five buys, so they can take them out, and five times three is 15, and that, that's a game that they can play. So I have these for all of the different numbers and their products. I wanted to show you an example of our notebooks. So here's a notebook, and the cover is laminated, and inside we have things that we are going to learn about different bugs. So we have ants and bees and ladybugs and butterflies, worms, um, snails, beetles. So all different things in here. So it isn't just bugs, but it's all different types of of bugs and and creepy crawlies. Okay, the thing I found to be the most necessary and the most helpful in our homeschool classroom is a comb binder. Um, I got this again from laminator.com. This was $24.99 as well and I got three different size combs. This is a quarter inch. Let's see. I don't even know where I can put this. It's very small. It'll hold up to 25 pages. And I got 100 of these for $2.89. This one is 3 quarters of an inch. And it will hold 175 pages. And I got 100 of these for $9.89. And this is the biggest one, Big Daddy one. Um, and this will hold 225 pages. And I got 50 of these for $11.39. Um, so I only got one box of each of these and I still have a bunch left. And then this is the comb binder. This serves double duty here. You slide the papers in and it punches the hole in it. And then you put your comb up here. Got it upside down. You put your comb up here in the teeth and there is, let me turn this around. There is a groove here that it holds on to, and that is what separates the comb. I can't even get a good shot, okay. And those are what separate the comb from the spine. 
So you hook this into here, and then you slide it to the side so you make sure it's hooked under those hooks, and then you pull it down and it separates so you can slide the papers into there, okay? So I'm gonna show you on just a, a winter worksheet that I made for the or winter workbook that I want to make for the girls. Just some fun things, some basic math and some basic spelling. So you don't want to do any more than 10 pages at a time in the comb binder. And this here will measure how big you want the pages. So letter is pushed all the way forward. If you're doing a laminated page, you want to pull it back so that way it's not all lined up at the top and then you have a lot of extra room at the bottom. So I'm going to push it into the laminator spot or into the letter spot, excuse me. And I'm going to grab about five pages. I'm going to get them lined up. You push it in and push it all the way down to this letter notch and then you push it forward. And there you go. You've got all of your holes. So I'm going to put that to the side and I'm going to do more. It's probably more than five pages. Okay. So I'm going to slide it down onto the teeth and move it over so that it connects onto those little spots that will pull it open. And I'm going to pull it forward. And then I'm going to use this stopper on the side to lock it into place. Okay, sometimes when they're brand new, they want to snap back closed. So you may have to do it a couple times just to relax them a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to pull to right there, and I'm going to lock it into place. Okay, so I'm going to turn it here so you can see a little bit better. So it's open right here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the papers, I'm gonna take them all at the same time, and I'm going to line them up. And then I'm going to come in here. I'm gonna do it with this hand. Get it in this space. And then you lean it over. And there you go. You've got yourself a workbook. So all comb bound, all put together, and it took no time, right? And you've got yourself a workbook. Going to do a laminated page, you're gonna push this all the way out. And you'll line up your laminated page in there. And you'll punch it down just the same way. And then to empty it, there's a door right here. So you just open the door and you would dump it all out in the trash. So there you go. That's how we make workbooks for our homeschool classroom. And I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know if you're going to try these out and how you like them. I'm going to leave all the links below where I bought all of these. If you like this video, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.